Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host for today for the Tim Liquid Legacy Cup. It's none other than just me. This time it's going to be Catspo. And we will be jumping in into pretty much the first quarterfinal. So this time we're going to be going directly into quarterfinals. And our first game is going to be in five, four, three, two, one. Let's see who we got. All right, there we are. So it's going to be none other than the Sakwa as the Brown Pradas playing on map. Is this Fighting Spirit? No, Sniper Ridge. All oh, right. Just wanted to check, make sure. So it's going to be on Sniper Ridge, and he's going to be at the bottom left location. And his opponent is going to be minus True Touch, playing as the Red Zerg at the bottom right. So, let's see what these guys have in store for us. Now, as I said previously, for those of you who maybe not catching up yet, this is going to be the first quarterfinals. And we'll be jumping right into them since, well, other games were not probably what we would want to see. So, uh, thank you, I love you too, guys. <coughs> so, we see a pylon first going down at the expansion location. So, it seems like the Sakwa is going to be interested in playing an expansion style. Now, uh, for those of you who might have any kind of uh, advices, whenever the sound is a little bit off, if you want to increase the sound of the game or something like that, just tell me in the chat, I'll try to keep an eye on that too. Now, we do see that, unfortunately for Touch, his overlord is going to be scouting in the incorrect direction, and the Sakwa is lucky enough to go into right in the right direction, and he most likely will see that second overlord pop, which means it actually will give him a good amount of information. <coughs> so, a small lead already but for the Sakwa, but uh, bear in mind that Touch is definitely capable of playing the game without even knowing where his opponent starts. Now we do see that the probe is going to try to block this, already the second drone is down there. So the probe might try to put something down, like maybe a pylon, but so far we see that... No, chooses not to. Alright. And we do see the forge first coming for the Sakwe, after scouting that this was probably going to be an early pull. Wow, actually he manages to get back into this and bother the, dr the drone a little bit more, which is pretty good, especially because if we look, actually, Trudez doesn't even have the money yet to, to lay down his hatchery, so pretty, pretty good by him. Now, that being said, uh, the Nexus is probably going to have to be delayed. I think that... No, okay, probably the timing is going to be relatively clutch. But it should be... No, it's, it's going to be fine, it's going to be fine. The, the pool is about to finish, and the Zorgans have to be built. Also, we'll probably get the pilot, the cannon there. All right, perfect. So so far, pretty good for the Sakwa. And we see that uh, Trudech is actually going to scout with the drone. Now, this is probably probably a smart choice by him, since there could be something crazy coming down, like two gateways. So just in case, he want to make sure that what he can make is uh, units or drones. So far, we see uh, six zerglings, so the most standard way, and a gas. So the gas does come down relatively early. Now we do see two cannons. Well, that's interesting. I mean, you you don't actually get to wall really well here with the uh, with the gateway. You'd still have a little bit of space down here that can be a problem. And actually, True Touch by scouting with the drone and seeing that there are two cannons, he may not just he may remember that. Okay, I'm not going to commit with my zerglings to try to run by, which is a good amount of information. Now we do see third drone going for the third, pretty standard as well so far on the natural of another main base to just secure himself another fourth. And the, the probe will scout that. Also, we do see that gas is being taken relatively fast. So this is not going to be probably a heavy commitment to a few zealots early on. Now, the Overlord will scout this. But it will be already finished. So, True Touch's um, timing is going to be slightly more complex than if he saw actually when the gas is finished. Right, he is gathering his own gas. And the layer goes really fast. So... <clears throat> So far, pretty, pretty good by the both players. Let's see what else. Zealots? No, so far. No Zealots. So, it seems like the Sakwe wants to save some minerals to get his core a little bit sooner. Let's see if he makes any Zealots at all. I would say that, yeah, you do probably need one or two Zealots just in case, because a heavy uh, link commitment at this point by Trudach would be kind of strange, but it can actually work. Uh, one thing that is interesting, though, there is... Is there a probe? Yes, the probe is actually... There is a probe actually scouting to Dutch's base. Now, this is for two reasons. First, to actually see the lure timing, which is important. Also, if you can get and maybe find that there is a 
fast tighter than that's pretty good but also to see when speed for the zogans is going to be finished it all it it kind of tells you i mean if the zogans don't have speed you almost certainly will not get run by almost certainly it, it can happen from time to time, but it's very weird that the Zerg will commit to Zerglings, not have speed, and try to run by your base. So we do see, first of all, as you can see, the, the choke is still quite quite wide down here. So, now we do see the starboard. So, so okay, woo, good micro by those Zerglings, taking out the first the probe that was scouting. And two Zealots, third coming down. We also see the Stargate, okay. Alright, so far no Citadel, so... Do we see no citadel? No citadel here either. So the citadel is not a prioritized. Okay, the spire is coming out relatively late compared to the stargate. Uh, so definitely you can get one, maybe even two overload kills with this first corsair. And we also see weapon, air weapons being upgraded by the sacway now. Although I really like that, I really like that kind of style because you're getting. See, he's also getting the ground attack upgrade. So he wants to get his units a little bit more powerful but just sacrificing a little bit of the early tech now if the coursers can actually kill maybe two overlords that's actually pretty good but if he doesn't get any overlords that can actually buy go back and bite him in the butt so very important to remember that now the spar is relatively close to be finished and what is the first corsair yeah okay so the first corsair just wants to make sure that this overlord will not be able to come back here and be kind of spotting anything so First Corsair goes for the Overlord that's closest to you, to the Sacqua's base. And the second one most likely is going to be sent to Scout, I would assume. Okay, there it goes. And the Spire is about to finish. So, he, there's still a little bit of time that the Corsair can actually Scout everything correctly. Now, we should see Scourges coming up. Uh, actually, Tursach is now Supply Blocked, so he can't actually make Scourges. That's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty good for him. Um... Uh, so, I mean, that's good for the sack, of course. Now we do see a sunken, another sunken probably, and another hatchery. So, so for the five hatch build, uh, we see already scores coming up. Oh, yeah, you should probably run now. Yeah. Oh, so really, really nicely timed by the Sakwa so far. He doesn't lose any Corsairs, he kills two Overlords. And he manages to save the Corsairs. Now, he really wants to be able to get a few Corsairs, maybe like six to seven and the plus one. Now, once those Scourges see this score spinning, which they should, yeah, they will, then that alone will tell True Dutch that there is actually a definitely a strong commitment to that. So we do see also uh, Capras being upgraded for the air units for True Dutch. So we will want to, con to fight in the air rather than getting to, let's say, very, very fast Hydras and just defending that way. Now, okay, so Hydra then, an Evolution Chamber, as you can see, pretty decent SimCity so far. Not, yeah, pretty good too here, so SimCity so far, very good for, for True Touch. And, to be frank, there's going to be a, a little bit of time until actually the Sakwa can do anything. As you can see, he's got two gateways, he's now moving out with a few speed lots, but with a few Sunkens laid down, uh, there's... This is kind of like a little bit just pressure to make sure that the Zerg makes units instead of drones. So that's basically, as you can see, more Sankas being added because of that. Now, the Sakwa will first try to poke in the third. And I am assuming that upon seeing this, he will just run to the natural and then run back again. Uh, interestingly enough, I do want to know if what's the Sakwa's next plan is. Oh, he's going to commit to this? I am not sure about that. Like, you can get some kills on the... I... That's actually pretty, pretty bad, because probably he thought there was a fourth. And since there's no fourth, those zealots actually are stranded right now, so you can't get them out. They'll probably not survive that. And at the same time, you don't actually have any ground army here, so I don't really like that kind of, that move. <clears throat> now, Corsairs are starting to be in decent numbers. There's seven of them. I think there's six here, maybe another one here. Uh, and another one being made, so that's going to put it up to eight. And so far they're not stacked, so you really want to stack them to make uh, Scourges having a lot more trouble to actually being able to hit them. But it does seem like there is no anti-air so far, so Trutage is going to start losing Overlords. Now, that will not supply block him yet, but yeah, if he doesn't get really good connections with these uh, Scourges, if they get killed, it's actually going to start to hurt him a lot. Okay, so the Sakwa does see this fleet and he's like, mm, okay, fine, not yet. Just get a few more Corsairs, then I can actually combat this on the air. Now, we also see Mutas. This is something that I'm not sure if it's, it's a good idea. I mean, if you can actually snipe the Corsairs, yes, awesome. But there's a lot of them. There's eight. And, yeah, and they're still being produced. So, 
these mutas, once there's 10, 12 Corsairs, I don't think they can do anything. So, should I just trying to make sure that he will not be attacked himself? I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to attack with this. So, hmm. Okay, so these zealots, as you can see, now forfeit. <clears throat> I mean. You could technically run down here and maybe snipe a drone. That's kind of the best thing that you can do with these, so I would do that. And it seems like the Sakura was going to try to take a third. This might be very difficult, because right now it's actually easy to switch to Hydras for Tudach. Uh, he's still going air? Yes, so far this massive amount of air units. And again, if the Sakura plays this slow, if he doesn't really rush anything, just very slowly gets a very high Corsair count. Ah, okay, whoa. Because of the color of the map, I'm actually having a little bit of trouble to following these units. I'm going to actually change it like this. It's going to be a little bit weirder, but at least I can follow the Corsair movement a lot easier. Now, there's a an Archon. That's definitely going to help. And this... Oh, these Corsairs really want to stay together. Oh, okay, let's see. So far, so good. Oh, ah, okay. So some shots landed on the Corsairs, but so far no Scourge connected. So, so far these Mutas, I mean... They can fight against one Archon, but they can't fight against an Archon and so many Corsairs. And we see 10 already out. Now, okay, there are the Hydras. So, Tudaj did manage to decide to change this up and start making his Hydras. Although his upgrades are relatively late. If you can see, plus one already done. Let's see. The, make sure that... I don't want to miss any battle, but I also want to check how the upgrade is going for the both of these base. Oh, that's, that's dangerous. That's really dangerous. Okay, that should actually... Yeah, that should actually ward off because... Two cannons, actually four, five cannons, so there's a lot of cannons down here. Um, Alright, so, whoa, as you can see, these Corsairs are really destroying the Scourges. So, yeah, these Mutas are, like, really, really, really bad position right now to do anything. And at this point, the question is, what can you do with these Mutas? Well, you can save them for later, and if these Corsairs eventually die, you can start sniping High Templars, but at this moment, they're not really useful, so... For the time being, oh, oh, shoot that! Oh, I mean, ten Corsairs, well, nine now, but nine Corsairs still do a lot of fast damage, so you definitely don't want to be facing them straight on. Now, Tudaj does manage to take his, his fourth, and is actually adding two more hatcheries, so he is planning for the later stage of the game. Oh, this, this interception might actually work. Very good interception. Here, uh, yeah, one goes down. And there's only eight left. Another two. Actually, three more might go down. Oh, very good storm. Actually, not only kills Scorges, but actually damages the Mutas a little bit. But uh, still, it's kind of dangerous because losing the Corsairs right now, I would actually be remaking them. I think I think at this point, you do want to make sure that these Mutas die so that they can't snipe High Templars. Now, the upgrade that first come down for Trudach is actually the range attack. So he seems to be really favoring the early mid-game with a high amount of Hydras. Now, I don't think that's the smartest way to go around this, but it definitely can work. Uh, for those of you who don't usually play Zerg, there are a lot of ways. A lot of Hydras is good, but the problem is that this third has many small chokes, so getting through to actually damage it is going to be very difficult. Now, obviously you can, as a Zerg, just decide to, to go and defend yourself, but Okay, so we do have a shuttle with three DTs, and the Corsairs are definitely going to try to make sure that there is nothing in the path so that the shuttle can actually get in. But as you can see, there is a pretty decent amount of red dots around the map that are constantly trying to find out whether there is something that they should be killing. So, yeah, this shuttle... Uh, is it going to get spotted by this Hydra? I don't think so. I mean, it, for a second maybe, but I don't think Hydra would actually have time to see it. Now, there's a lot of more Dragoons at this time, which does make a lot of sense if you can actually get around with it. And this shuttle is actually going to fly completely unscouted to this base. There's no, there's nothing here yet to actually even detect or defend it. So these DTs can do some damage. Now, I don't think uh, it's going to snipe all three hatches, but it can definitely kill like a few drones and then go for the main hatchery here and try to slow down this economy. Now at the same time we do see that uh, the Sakwa is still upgrading, uh, just, well not yet, but he does have a decent amount of upgrades, so the DTs are actually now starting to do some damage. Now Tudach isn't realizing it yet, uh, which is usually quite common because DTs don't make a sound unless you, okay, unless you damage something but don't kill it. So there we go, DTs now starting to go at this base and we see a lot of overloads coming down here, so eventually these DTs will get killed, but 
that actually fall back might actually be enough time for the DTs to actually kill it. Oh, will it be? Yeah, barely, but it does get it. So with that, this will slow the economy slightly. I mean, you do want to replace this. And at the same time, actually, the side was pushing through the, through the natural. Now, where are the storms? This Oh, the high temples are lagging behind. That's kind of diff uh, dangerous because he's now going to get flanked from two sides. So the storms have to be really good. As you can see, the army is kind of fighting in both sides. And this is bad either way for the Sackway. Even if the storms are amazing and kills everything on this side, the other side is still going to be trading relatively efficiently against his army. So this is not the best engagement for for the Sackway. Definitely he didn't want to fight on two fronts. Now, it does seem like he will beat this down for now. So for now it's okay, but the army, as you can see, for the sack actually is now really small. This army can be easily killed by like 10, 20 hydras with just like, aiming really well. So the sack was trying to reinforce this with just dragoons, and actually, as you can see, the mews are starting to be a problem now. So I, I don't know. I would actually pull back this army to this one and make sure that both armies can get together because otherwise. Either of these two two armies can get really sniped. Okay, decent storm, and uh, now that's a good storm. That's a very good storm. Now the high Templar will die, but a lot of a lot of actually hydras have died, and all the mutas are down. So no snipes for the high Templars anymore. Uh, Fusel is kind of running around trying to find out if there's another base. And bear in mind that Trudich actually didn't rebuild any drones here or his hatch. So he's just producing units and now he's transitioning into lurkers. But his economy is actually on three base, while the Sakwa is also on three base. So Definitely that favors uh, the sack was uh, the sack was play so I would say that right now that is kind of about to lose the game right right from the get-go Unfortunately, I mean This this is a heavy Dragoon composition against the hydro composition But it's not just that you usually need some some Zogun since they actually tank a lot of the shots in a funny way Since you overkill many of the times and the hydros don't really do that too well and with the range upgrade so far, it's doing pretty well. Now, this defensive setup is very difficult to break, so the Sakwa might not want to go for it, but he is expanding at the same time. So, pretty smart by the Sakwa to keep this pressure up, and as you can see, he's, he's actually in supply really ahead. So, he does have a very strong supply, and however, we do see Hive finished, and as soon as there is uh, Dark Swarm, if if Trish actually has any money to do that, because he's really, really struggling to get in gas. But if he does manage to get that, uh, it will definitely allow him to stop this. Unfortunately for him, the Sakwa is not going to give him a second. He's just going to keep ramming base, either this base or the other one. He's constantly hitting one way or the other. And as we can see, Dragoons actually do really well against Sunkens, but Sunkens do really well against Dragoons. So once the Hydras actually die, and there's no Hydras anymore, these Sunkens are going to die very fast. I, I, I'm, I think that's about it. I think this is going to be game. I mean, I, I don't see how actually Trudech can defend this, especially since there's actually another army coming to to help. And although Dra Mass Dragoon is usually not the best way to to play, if you're able to force trades from the Zerg constantly, Dragoons can break this kind of position. Zealots have a lot of harder time to do that. So, first game will go for the Sakwa in a pretty interesting game. I would say I, I didn't expect... Uh, after Trudech managed to take his fourth and saturate it, I didn't expect to see that kind of turn in events. Unfortunately, the DDT drop managed to do some damage. At the same time, the Sakwa was constantly putting pressure. Ah, uh, okay, so that's gonna put up the Sakwa up 1-0. I'm going to need a few seconds here and need another game to get ready.